שלום וברכה, I would like to wish you well. בעזרת השם, today, we would like to explain what uh, it is, the, how we can build our Bet HaMikdash and our generation. Of course, we don't have any Bet HaMikdash today, but we pray to Hashem, for Beit HaMikdash. But how to build it? How to build it? Of course, my friend, most of the rabbis explain the only way to build Beit HaMikdash is by Torah. The Beit HaMikdash was destroyed with fire and we compare the Torah as the fire. So with the fire we built the Torah. We have to know something. But what it is the reason why the Bet HaMikdash was destroyed? So the Prophet said the Torah was destroyed because they did not study Torah. It's very hard to understand that in those times, in those generations, that they did not study Torah. Of course they studied Torah. Just they did not appreciate the Torah. They didn't feel the Torah. They didn't feel the beauty of the Torah. You know, there was uh, somebody that uh, there was somebody that he came to Rav Steyman and he asked him. He told him, "I don't feel when I study. I don't feel the pleasure to study." He told him, "Well, unfortunately, if you don't feel, because there is a problem. Maybe you have some spot in your mouth." He said, you know, children, they love sweets. But the only time that they don't like sweets when they have spot in their mouth. So the sweets hurt them. They, they cannot enjoy the sweets if they have spot in their mouth. So he told him, maybe you speak Lashonara. Maybe you have a bad, you don't use good your language. So that's why you don't feel, you don't feel the, the Torah. You don't feel the pleasure of the Torah. So my, my friend, the Bidem Midrash was destroyed because I have to tell you something. The Pro, David HaMelech said, Umdot hayuraglinu bishaarei Yerushalayim. Yerushalayim habinuya. Shiftiyah aidot l'Yisrael kishama yeshvu etc. etc. David HaMelech said, that the Bnei Israel, when they had a problem of halacha, to know something, they will go to Jerusalem. I mean, in Jerusalem, they will, there is their Kohanim, that they will ask them for the halacha. So one day, I ask myself a question, but what? In all Aris Israel, in all Israel, there were, there were no rabbis? They were not chief rabbis to teach them halacha, to teach, to teach them Torah, only in Yerushalayim. The answer is yes, of course. There were rabbis everywhere, but where the Bet Hamikdash was in Yerushalayim, in Yerushalayim, the the weather of Yerushalayim mahkim, because Hashem lived there. The Hashem, the, the house of Hashem was in Jerusalem, and because the house of Hashem was in Jerusalem, so, so there, the rabbis who live in Jerusalem, they can give you any kind of answer that you have on the Torah. Of course there, were, there is rabbis, but Hashem, He made Jerusalem special, Shisham, because there, there is Hashem. The house of Hashem is there. And because it's like the palace, you understand? Like, like Le Havdil in, in, in France, the palace of, uh, of the president, it's in Paris. The palace of the president of the United States in Washington. You know, always there is a palace of the president. So Le Havdil, the palace of Hashem, the house of Hashem, is in Yerushalayim. 
So the Yerushalayim is the captain, is the capital of uh, of everything. So Hashem he made that sometimes those who live in Yerushalayim they understand more Torah than those who live outside Yerushalayim. So you understand. So I think the Ben Israel they went to Yerushalayim, but they did not enjoy the Torah that they could understand there in Yerushalayim. I mean, they went to Yerushalayim for a fun, for uh, to meet people, for business, but not for Hashem. And that's why the Beit Hamidrash was destroyed. Hashem created the word for the Torah. And if there is no Torah, it's a problem. Yes. The Gemara said that the second temple, they were big rabbis. But uh, unfortunately, because there was no love between them. Sinat Hinam. People, they hate each other. I mean, it's it's incredible. On one hand, they were tzaddikim. On one hand, they were very, very, uh, very elegant on the Torah. On the other hand, they didn't like each other. How, 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 uh, it's a big contradiction. How can you not love your friend and your Arab and Torah? It, it's hard to believe this. So they were all B'nai Torah. And how did they like each other? It's a con- contradiction. My friend, because they did not have a pleasure of the Torah. When you don't have pleasure on the, to- on the Torah, like you have pleasure when you have money, so automatically there is no, there is no, there is nothing left. When you have the pleasure of the Torah, you love your, your, your friends. I would like to tell you, one day, Rav Shachal Shalom, there was a boy who came, uh, if I don't remember, if I remember, there is a, uh, Rav Moshe Reichman, Alav Shalom, he was very, very close to Rav Shach. One day he came to Rav Shach, and uh, Rav Moshe Reichman, he was a big supporter of the Pony Vichy Shiva. And one day he came to Rav Shach, and the same moment there was a, a, a man with his son who came to see Rav Shach. Now, uh, that man, he told Rav Moshe Reichman, please do me a favor, I know, you are very close to the Rav Shach. If you start to talk to him, it will take hours. I want only a few minutes. I want just a bracha from, from Rav Shach, for my son, that he don't understand well the Gemara. Please, just... So Rav Moshe Reich mainly accepted. He said, okay, you can go ahead before me. So he entered. 15 minutes, half an hour, two hours, three hours, Rav Shach with the baby, with the boy. And the Rav Moshe Reichman, he came to Israel from America, from Canada, only for a few hours to see Rav Shach, and then go back to, America, to Canada. What's going on inside? After a few hours, Rav Shach he came out with the, the the father and the son, and his son, and they were all smiling. So Rab Rab Shach Alav Shalom, he asked Mr. Reichman, Rab Reichman, I'm sorry for what I did to you. He said, but tell, please tell me what happened inside. I mean, I don't understand what you did for three hours with that boy. He said. That boy, he came for a bracha that Hashem will help him to understand. But even if I give him the bracha, it would not help. I saw that the problem that he don't he, he don't have the, the 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 pleasure to study the Torah. So I give him the the pleasure. I had to study with him. 
I have to open the Gemara with him. And I started to explain him the Mishnah until he started to appreciate the Mishnah. I, it's like when you cook something, you taste it to see if it's good. And if there is something missing, so you add what, you, what it's need. So that boy, I saw that he, 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 he studied Torah, but he understand, but he don't have the pleasure. And because he don't have the pleasure, so there is never he will never he will understand it, never will appreciate it. So I had to give him the the pleasure. I had to, to give him to teach him how to feel the how to learn, how to study, how to appreciate. And after three, three hours, I saw that he was very happy. Now he can go. Like a train. Once the train goes, he go. He don't stop. He go. He will not make a mistake. My friend, that way the Bita Mikdash was destroyed. So how can we rebuild Bita Mikdash in our generation? To rebuild an Bita Mikdash in our generation it's only through Torah. And that was the Alava Shalom, the Ran said from the Migilat Starim of Rabbi Yona. She bivaday oskim hayu ba Torah tamid. Of course, always they did study Torah. But the Torah was not uh, valuable in their eyes. It was not valuable. They did not value the Torah. So now, and, uh, I, as I explained you, how you value the Torah? How you value the Torah? You value the Torah only when you repeat it, you repeat it, you repeat it, and to try to understand it. To try to understand it. I mean, you understand? This is appreciate, and because they did not have this, so the Bita Dash was... Uh, so, of course, if you don't appreciate the Torah, so all the mitzvot that you do, you do them with, with, with no... Appre- you don't appreciate them. So the Bita Dash was destroyed. Today, my friend... Baruch Hashem today, people, they learn Dafayumi. Every day, people learn. But I saw that only few people really appreciate the Dafayumi, the Daf, the page that they read every day. A lot of people, one day they, they do it, one day they don't do, they don't do it, one day they miss it, one, one day they came uh, uh, half an hour. And uh, uh, we understand. I mean, I mean, to appreciate the, the death of you me, you should not miss a minute of it. You have to fix a time, and by fixing the time, you should you should not stop. When if you have an appointment with the with a, with a with a doctor, a big doctor, I mean, we not miss the appointment. So when you have an appointment for death you me, to study a death. You have to respect the, the time. You have to respect the hour. Imagine you need a mortgage from the bank, and you've been waiting for two months for the, the appointment with the, and they give you an appointment. You will not miss the appointment. So the same with the with the appointment that you have that you fix to study the Torah. You should not miss it, and if you miss it, it's a problem. It's a problem if you miss it. So my friend, if you don't miss it, that means that you enjoy it, that you love it. Unfortunately, the Beit Hamikdash was destroyed because they did not appreciate the time that they fixed to study Torah, and that's why the Beit Hamikdash was destroyed. So the reparation is to be more strict in the time that you give yourself for the Torah, my friend. Sometimes people, they may come to the synagogue only for, a, not for a fun, because they are used to, to come. Because they, you know, it's like a robot. They wake up in the morning, they came, and after they sit for the Fayumi. It's like a robot. No. You have to renew yourself. Yourself, you have to wake up yourself. You are not a robot. You have to wake up yourself to come to pray. 
You have to wake up yourself to come to study Torah. Not as usual. No. No, it's, a, it's, a, it's because you feel it. You come to pray, not because I'm used to come to pray. Because it become, it's become like a, a, a minhag, you know, a custom to come. No. You, you should feel it. My friend, I remember one thing. And I will never forget that. My father, Alava Shalom, every Friday, every Friday, he will help my mother and the house. Lichud Shabbat. And I tell you something. I am now 72 year old. I do that every Friday. And if I do that every Friday, so that means every Friday in my mind, I think, I imagine, and I see, I remember what my father was doing. And I do the same. And because I do that, that means that my father, he did it for Hashem. I mean, there was no obligation to do what he did to help my mother. My mother, she had somebody who helped her. My sisters, or sometimes there was somebody, a woman that she used to come to help her. But my father, he, would, he wanted to do that for the mitzvah. And the proof that I do that today, and the proof that I do that today, so it's because it's because my father did that Lishim Shamaim for Akadosh Baruch Hu. Because he did that for Akadosh Baruch Hu, so I do it today. It's incredible. My friend, David the Melech, he, he was the one who teach us how much we have to be close to Hashem and how much we have to feel Hashem. He said, I ask from Hashem one thing, not two things. Please, Hashem, help me. When I come to the synagogue, when I come to the Beit Midrash, when I come to the Beit, to the Beit Midrash, I want to feel like I just came now. You know, when, when you buy a diamond to your wife, when she saw the diamond, she's excited. She's happy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But after a few days, that's it. She will not tell you thank you anymore. That's it. Because she, she got used to it. That's it. She forgot. We have to come to the synagogue like with excitement. Like it's for the first time that I came. I should not feel that, uh, well, like yesterday, like the day before, like every day, like usual. No. So you will not feel Hashem. I ask somebody, do you feel Hashem? He, he answered me. And you, Rabbi, you feel him? I said, yes. So he told me, Rabbi, can you tell me why, why I don't feel it like you feel it? So I told him, well, the difference between you and me, I don't know what it is the difference. But one thing I know, that I do my best to feel Hashem. I don't disconnect myself from Akash Baruch I do my best to be all the time, to look for him. When I look for him, he appears. I would like to tell you a, a, a beautiful story. Yesterday, a woman came to see me, and she told me, Rabbi David, Baruch Hashem, all the tefillot with the zichot of your grandparent for my family, they come through. Now I have another problem. I said, Madam, now that you know that Hashem answered my, my tefillah, so now you have to pray. Don't be like a perroquet. When you need something, you go to the rabbi to ask him for a bracha. You pray, you. Pray. Don't get used to, to come to me every time. Now, 
now that you know that Hashem can answer. So, so you pray to Hashem. Pray to Hashem. And she looked at me. She said, Ah, so, but I would like you to pray. I said, Beseda, I'll pray. But don't forget. Don't forget. You must pray too. You must pray. You know, my friend, there is a prophet who said, Malachem Lirmos Hasarai. HaKash Baruch Hu, he told the prophets to tell the Jews, Enough. I don't want you to come to the Bidem Mikdash anymore. I don't understand. Hashem, you want us to go to the Bidem Mikdash. Why Hashem doesn't want us now to, to come to the Bidem Mikdash? Why you complain? The answer is, Hashem is not happy. Hashem is not happy that we come to the Bet HaMikdash only for, uh, for fun. If we come to Bet HaMikdash, we come to the Bet HaMikdash to feel Hashem, to pray to Hashem, not just, uh, well, I came, like usual, like, uh, like I do. No, you have to feel Hashem. My friend, I saw a beautiful story about a, a big rabbi, Rabbi Arye Levi. One day, he was very poor when he was young. And he was by a, he was by a, by a, some people that invite him to stay there for a while because he was in the yeshiva. And the after a few weeks, he decided to leave the house. So they asked him, why you, why you want to leave the house? He would not tell them. He said, no, thank you very much. I've been here for a while. Thank you. Later, they asked him, but why you left him? He said, well, one day I saw the Baalabait, the owner of the house, he was fighting with his wife, and his wife fight him back. Well, I said nothing. And then every day they fight, every day they fight, they fight, they fight. So I got used to it. So I started to, to accept their fighting. So then I said to myself, Arie, this is, if you if you agree, you accept this fight, that means that you like people to fight. So that's why I left. Because I didn't want to get used to see people fighting. For me, people who fight, it's terrible, it's dangerous. When I saw that, well, it's normal, let them fight. But for me, I didn't want to, I didn't want to get used to that. My friend, we have to do our best not to get used to bad things. And that's why the Bitamik Dash was destroyed. Bitamik Dash was destroyed because there were 10 miracles, a lot of miracles in the Bitamik Dash. And people saw those miracles, and unfortunately, they did nothing. I mean, they got used to them. Instead of, of by looking at those miracles as a big thing to connect themselves, themselves more to Akash Baruch they got used to them. So the Bidemikdash was destroyed. Because they got used to them. Hashem said, well, if you don't feel me in the Bidemikdash, even through the miracles that you see, so I don't want to stay with you here. I want to get out from him. I want to go. My friend, you know what the name of the three times that we go to Jerusalem, Shalosh Regalim, the three Regalim, the three holy days, Pesach, Shavuot, and Sukkot. But the name is Regalim. Regalim from the word feet, Regal, the feet, because the people used to walk. At the time there was no train, no, no, no planes, no helicopters, no airplanes. They used to, to, to walk. To walk. 
vous avez fait trois régalim. Mais les régalim, aussi, well, c'est from the word hergel. Hergel, ça veut you know, uh, use. I'm ragil. I'm used to that. So that means that he, he want the Jews don't come to Shalaim as a as a as a as hergel as a as a don't get used used to to go. It's like we we're used to eat bread. You know, you have to. To go to Rushalayim only for Hashem, not like a robot, not from a hergel, el a regel. You know, you walk for Hashem, not as I'm used to go. You, you know, it's become used. You, you know, I have, I have no choice. I have to. That it's like you, you curse Hashem. It's like you don't appreciate appreciate Hashem. Hashem. Every second they give you a new life. Every second Akash will give you something new, 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 new life, new everything, new. So my friend, you have to get you are not allowed to get used to all what Hashem give you. And that's why we don't say thank you to Hashem. Because you got used to it. Yes, my friend. I would like just to tell you something. Do we have any in the do Uh, do, are, are we, do we have any privilege to get from Hashem or what we get? No. It's only Hashem, do we? Hashem's goodness. Oh, Hashem, today everybody live in Eretz Israel. How much we have to appreciate, say thank you to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Be'ezat Hashem, we pray to HaKadosh Baruch Hu to see Mashiach Tzitkinu, Bimeira Bi'aminu, Amel Keratzon, Hashem bless you. Toda. Don't forget my friend. That's why once a year we sit on the floor. Never we sit on the floor. Only when we lose somebody. When we lose somebody, a close parent, during seven days we sit on the floor. But besides this, we never sit, sit on the floor. Only on Tisha Abiyav. On Tisha Abiyav, we do sit on the floor. We mourn the destruction of Beit HaMikdash. Why we sit on the floor? To remember. One day we were walking. We were happy when we went to the Beit HaMikdash. Today we sit on the floor. Today we don't have. We mourn the destruction. We got used to too much to all the goodness that Hashem gave us. And now all this is missing. So we pray to Hashem to bring back the bitter big dash. Be'ezat Hashem. What is very important is not to get used to the life, to the spiritual life. Every time we do a mitzvah, we do it, it's like, with new decoration. My friend, I saw a, a couple who came to see me, and the man complained, Rabbi, my wife, she spent too much money. Every, every, every summer, she needs to buy 10 different clothes. Because in summer there is a lot of weddings by mitzvot, and she need. Why she not buy two or three? Why ten? Each one she need to change the the, the dress. Uh, why? Uh, no, well, uh, I couldn't give an answer. So I looked at the, the the lady. I told her, "Do you have a reason why you buy ten ten dress dresses?" She said, "Rabbi." I'm not, it's not nice. My husband is rich. And uh, it's not nice that I will go with the same dress to two bar mitzvah or two weddings. What people are going to say? So I told her, okay, you're right. 
I said, okay. But uh, try uh, don't buy them a- every year. I mean, what uh, you wear this year? Well, maybe you will wear them two years. So what was her answer? Yeah, but people take pictures. They will see that two years ago I wore that dress. So for people, I have to change the dresses. So I said to myself, well, that's the way we have to serve Hashem. We have to serve Hashem always new, not the same. Always with new cohort, new strength, new way to, to serve Hashem, but in the good way. Hashem bless you. Thank you. Bye.